Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Shout out to our boy Dean. He says, starting to think Chris Jones is a real life mush. As uh, Chris Jones gets hired by the Hamilton Tiger Cats, they just blow the lead in the final second and they lose. And of course, he just came from a team that uh, he consistently lost with, with Edmonton and have won three games in a row uh, without him. That was an ultimate screw job. I don't even want to think about it. And like, you know, what, what are you going to do? I do buy half points when you can, but you can't buy half points. Like, they, they don't deal half points in the CFL. So. We lost the teaser by half a point because it was minus three and a half and uh, with, with the closing number. Well, at least, you know, we lost one of them, whatever. It was it was nine and a half earlier in the week, depending on when you bet it. But we just lost a, two plays by half a point, right? It was very, very, very frustrating. When I looked up, too, and it, for whatever reason, I don't know, I was talking to Rob and, you know, I was focused and stuff. I was like, yeah, we need two touchdowns, right? And we're going to get there. And I realized now it was a touchdown and a field goal, so we lose by half a point. There wasn't a two touchdowns. Just, you know, sometimes not meant to be. We've had a good run in the CFL. Last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of, like, tough losses. Last night was another frustrating one, 20 to 19. Um, we lost the teaser by a point, right? So I remember the late, great Dave Malinsky would say, though, often, he goes, if, if you're betting and you're losing by close stuff when you lose, he goes, if you're getting blown out, you probably shouldn't be betting. <laughs> like, so, I mean, like, I, when I lose these bets, I'm losing on, like, really weird ways. And they're like, how the hell did it, like, not go over? Especially last night, too. The Argonauts had the ball three times uh, on the goal line. It went for it three times. It got stopped on nine straight plays consecutively through the game. So we jumped in on the uh, over uh, in the second half. You're already on the Raiders plus the points in this game. And the Raiders are winning the game outright right now, 21-17. Uh, and they were nine-point underdogs, guys. So the Raiders are winning 21-17. Uh, There's nine minutes left in the third. And at halftime, it was 43-and-a-half. went up to 44-and-a-half. We jumped in and we put. We said, all right, let's, let's just smash this on the way out here. And boom, the Raiders score an early touchdown here in the third quarter. Because it was 17-14 at the time. So uh, we're already up to 38 points right now. One more touchdown will get us there. The in-game total uh, right now in this game is uh, 51 and a half. And it looks like the Niners are going to be getting the ball in a pretty good field position. Although, eh, this is why you're playing uh, right now when you are. Oh, nice return, actually. I'll give him credit. Really nice return. 
he screwed up big time by letting the ball get past him. You'll notice this in these NFL preseason games, and especially in the second half. There's a lot of special teams miscues. There's just guys fighting for jobs. Like, you know what I mean? They don't play together. There's just a bunch of dudes thrown out there right now. And there's a lot of chaos. So the guy in the Niners, he let the ball bounce like 20 yards behind him for whatever stupid reason. He didn't catch it on the fly. And then um, he sort of got some yards back by it was a nice effort with the run, but he still made a mistake. Tony Finn will be the next one to step up and in and uh, join us uh, tonight. 7 nothing San Diego right now. Last night it was an emotional win for the Mets. San Diego getting them back this evening. Have a football score here. San Diego 7, New York nothing, end of 8. So we're going into the top of the ninth inning. The Brew Crew lead the Athletics 7-3 in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Dodgers, the Dodgers were down 3 nothing, uh, but they've come back. And they've tied the game 3-3 right now with the Rays. We liked Otani, you know, the total bases. Otani did home run. I thought the 8.5 was a little light. In-game total right now happens to be 8.5. Right, so we're sort of right where we started. It's the top of the eighth inning uh, right now. Tampa do have a runner on uh, second base. As far as Otani is concerned, Otani's got... um, He's got uh, one total base tonight, which isn't good. <laughs> he's one for four, so he's he's got a single. I need I needed a double or more. Uh, is he going to be coming up again um, in a three three game? Whatever. So let's you know. Hopefully this game goes to extra or whatever. So one good thing about like certain props, they're still alive until the game is over, right? Like Otani can still hit a home run. He's got a, he's already got one base. He gets another single. We win the, the the over one and a half total bases. So there's still a lot of baseball left here, especially depending on what happens here with Tampa Bay. But let's see how many if, uh, if Otani can get uh, get another at uh, another at bat. So there's the uh, the baseball uh, live baseball picture uh, right now, but uh, college football is getting ready to kick off and. Florida State and Georgia Tech opening up in Dublin. It's an interesting, it's a big-time game, right? It's a conference game, and Florida State have a lot of new players. They're a very good team, but they have a lot of new players. You're playing on a neutral field, and you're playing against a team that can put points up on the board. You're playing against a team that has a lot of returning starters, you're playing against a team that ended the season strong last year. They went 4-2 and two in their last six. One of the losses was a tough game against the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, Haynes King, former Texas A&M quarterback, he had 27 touchdown passes and 16 interceptions last year, threw for uh, nearly 3,000 yards in the Georgia Tech offense, and he got better, and the offense got better as the year went on. So there could, you know, should be a little bit of a carryover. Georgia Tech's weakness is stopping the run. So they're going to give up some, um, they're going to give up chunks on the ground. All right. So for you prop players out there, and we'll have some props uh, for everybody, Florida State are going to be able to run the ball. So I would look at Roy Dell Williams over 71 and a half rush yards. DJ is over under 20 and a half rush yards. Now, I would say, you know what, man, I really like DJ over 20 and a half rush yards. He's a massive dude, all right? The guy's like Cam Newton. He could just run people over. But the problem with college football, and just for the record, this is a little like betting 101. If you're unaware, just a heads up for some people. If you're betting college football props on quarterbacks, the sacks, sacks count against quarterbacks' rush yards in college football betting. It's stupid. It doesn't in the NFL, right? But it does in uh, in it, it's ridiculous. So, you know, you sometimes you'll see like a quarterback. You'll be like, "Wow, I could have swore I saw this guy run for like sixty yards before, and he only has thirty eight yards rushing." Yeah, because he's been sacked a couple of times, right? So that's why you can, you know, I'm just giving you a heads up with the quarterback stuff. Sometimes people will bite on it and get burnt and not realize the different rules. But so I would stay away from that. But R- Roydell Williams is going to get a lot of opportunities. Like I said, Georgia Tech secondary is pretty good. 
DJ U's coming in here. It's his first game at quarterback. He's a good quarterback, but they're not going to get, like, pass happy here. They lost their wide receivers, Florida State, right? Yeah, Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson. So, like, they're not in trouble. They're just going to shift their offense to a more ground-based attack. So, I like Williams uh, over 71.5 rush yards for Florida State. And I think Williams will score a touchdown as well. Williams to score a touchdown is minus 150. Uh, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech can run the football. Georgia Tech's offense is good. This is why I think they're going to be able to hang around in this football game, and I think it'll get over uh, the number when it's all said and done. The thing is, though, Florida State's defensive line is good. And I think that Georgia Tech will end up throwing the ball more. They're gonna, I think they'll be more comfortable throwing the ball, right? I think they could be trailing in a game, and you know, we need to score here. You got Haynes King. You got a bunch of stud wide receivers. So I could see uh, Haynes King is uh, his rushing yard prop is 41 and a half. So I'm going to stay away from the Georgia Tech rush yard props, but this is our first college football player prop play of the year for you. Roydell Williams, Florida State, over 71 and a half rush yards. Georgia Tech, they bulked up. Like, you know, they went on a big diet program and, you know, whatever. They're, so their defensive linemen and their D linemen and linebackers are all bigger. And they brought in a couple of new dudes. They feel better about their rush defense, but still. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows that QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. sharpest football contest show in the land the las vegas football contest show focuses on circus sports million circus survivor and the westgate super contest handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season with two former super contest winners brady cannon and james salinas a former nfl player mike pritchard and over one million dollars in contest prize money won combined the las vegas football contest show will have you prepared this season like none other This is Sports Radio. John Morenci, Sirius XM Channel 159, Sports Good Radio, Television Networks. 21 17 for Vegas. There's two minutes left in the third quarter of play at Allegiant Stadium uh, in Vegas. And it's third and goal right now. The Niners had the ball like around the five yard line. They're sort of going backwards. They were about to score. They're going backwards. Dobbs is in a quarterback for them right now. If they score here, the game will go over the number that we bet at the half over 43 and a half, over 44 and a half. And they just scored the touchdown. So that was a quick, uh, nice win. 
So bad beat on the CFL game, but we respond in a big way. We told you over 43 and a half, boom, it just hit. They're already at 44, and it's going to go over to 44 and a half here with the extra point uh, if they get the extra point. I don't think the scoring is done yet in this game either, to be honest. So the extra point is good. We're at 45 now, and they're, they're, they're boxing us out. I was say, I was going to say, you know what? Earlier it was 50 and a half again, 51 and a half. I was thinking, oh, well, maybe. They just made it 52 and a half. The computer and the odds makers are aware that this game is a track meet right now. And I think it's something to remember coming into tomorrow. This is about to be four to the last five NFL preseason games to um, to to go over uh, the number after that big under run. Let's do the uh, let's do another best of X uh, here. Roll it. I like this one. This is a good one. After divorcing Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez will now test free agency and pursue her fifth ring. It's a race to five between her and LeBron. I know LeBron's happily married. Too bad they just couldn't marry each other. And uh, there you go. You both, <laughs> there you get the five. But Jennifer Jennifer Lopez getting to um, getting to uh, getting to five rings is just uh, awesome stuff. Uh, we wish her and uh, Ben Affleck uh, the best. <laughs> Who came up with this one? This is a good one. Um, basketball forever. Shout out to Basketball Forever for that. Uh, B-Ball Forever. That's that's a great tweet. You know, Twitter, Twitter acts can be a cesspool of contamination, and there's a lot of, like, really stupid, stupid people on it. But stuff like this makes it worth it. And that's why we do this segment. So you don't have to see, you don't have to get your hands dirty like I do. Right? You know, I'm the one that has to go in and... Uh, sift through the filth to bring you the best of X. <laughs> so 24-21 right now, four to 49ers, totals 53 and a half. Looking at the preseason games for uh, that are coming up by uh, here, Baltimore Ravens and the Green Bay Packers tomorrow, totals 33 and a half in that game. You know, like how we were all betting, like just it was like, all right, bet the blind unders. And pretty much now it's like bet the blind overs, but just point blank. You know, I'm kicking myself. I'm like, well, I don't know why. I knew it sort of deep inside. I was like, I should have just sort of listened to my gut on this, but I need to see it happen. And I'm, you know, now I'm in. But um, Carolina are playing their starters tomorrow against the Buffalo Bills. The Carolina Panthers are four and a half point favorites. Do you like, okay. So you think because Bryce Young is starting, they, they should be laying four and a half? I'm not sure that the Buffalo Bills backups aren't better than the Carolina Panthers starters are, to be honest. Uh, let's bring in Tony Finn right now. Straight from the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. Good to see you, Tony. How you doing tonight? Good, good. Good to see you, too. I'm just listening in on your Buffalo Bills, Carolina Panthers comparison there. So Nice. What do you think? <laughs> well, 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 listen, I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth and ask you, you know, if you, if you don't want to bet the game, but... Would you be comfortable laying four and a half points with the Carolina Panthers just because they're starting their starters tomorrow? And it's weird because Canales didn't play Bryce Young before. So now he wants to play Bryce Young suddenly against Buffalo and Buffalo. I'm all about underdogs, Tony. Look at the Raiders tonight, getting nine points. Well, we'll see what happens. Nine, nine and a half. They're down 24-21 right now. But what do you what, what do you think about these uh, these preseason games going over the number? And then what do you think of the Carolina-Buffalo game? Well, I... I, listen, I, we probably agree. Preseason football is a completely different animal. I, I handicap preseason based on backups, not on starters. Uh, um, backups. Who has the deepest roster? Who has more quality players in the second and third tier? Uh, and and without question, I think Buffalo is stronger. Their backups are stronger than Carolina starters. Agree with you 100%. Uh, maybe even their third tier. Uh, who's going to play, who's not going to play. Uh, starters against third-tier players, Gabe. Um, I'll give you a perfect example tonight. A lot of people didn't agree with me. I played Tampa Bay because I thought their intentions, their intentions was this was a dress rehearsal for them. Miami could give a you-know-what. So um, while the game was closer than I thought it would be, it still was a, what, a, a 10, 13 uh, difference. But I would be on Buffalo. I'm not going to play Carolina. I still don't care in the preseason. I'm still not going to play bad teams who I think are poorly coached. And I think that's who Carolina is. 
All right, we'll reset uh, Tony's uh, audio uh, if we, we can. I know we're coming up against a break, actually, so. Okay. I'll just talk for a minute, uh, Tony. You sound good, but yeah, there's a little, there's like a little, there's some clicking going on here. Maybe uh, okay. you're being listened. You're maybe maybe they're listening to you. They're spying on you, Tony. Very, very. It sounds possible. like there's a wire. There's a wiretap or something like that going on. <laughs> In game total fifty two and a half. Now the Raiders are moving to football right now, just like that. So looking at tomorrow's games, as we said, so Carolina. All right, you start your starters. They're not going to play that long. And Tony is exactly right as far as as far as when you're handicapping these preseason games. You sort of have to cap the bench. Although we should note, week three, the last week of the preseason now, this is pinball, crack cocaine. It's all over the place, right? Different, you know what I mean? It's it's very, very random as we see. It, but it's generally been more higher scoring. But the total in the Bills and the Panthers game is 31. But I think the Bills plus four and a half are the play in that football game. Anytime, you know, I can get like multiple points. Here's like here's another one. The Steelers are laying seven in Detroit. That's a lot of points to be laying with the Steelers, who haven't looked very good in the preseason uh, in Detroit. Chargers are getting three and a half against the Dallas Cowboys. Thank God this stuff is coming to an end. Uh, we'll see what uh, Tony has to say about uh, week zero of college football. Georgia Tech and Florida State countdown to kickoff is on right now. In fact, we're less than 12 hours away, which is pretty insane. Um it's time to start to get these bets in, but we got the Raiders and the Niners going on still as we speak. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Friday Night Free Show continues. Sirius XM Channel 159 Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. So the preseason uh, is winding down. We've got the game going on right now. 24-21 for the San Francisco 49ers. Although the Raiders are moving to football. And they're, they're at midfield uh, right now. So they're down three. We're going into the fourth quarter. In-game total is 52 and a half. So it's 45. They're kind of trying to box people out of jumping in on the over again here. Um... 
So otherwise, it would be 51 and a half. So you need more than you know, a touchdown to, to win this bet. But even then, I got to believe, actually, I think this game, you're seeing both teams just sort of go up and down the field uh, right now. I don't want to get too greedy, and I got to still hope the Raiders actually cover this number. They don't lose by 10 because I've got them at 9. Tony Finn in the house with us. So, uh, Tony, college football ready to kick off. Uh, yeah. Florida State and Georgia Tech are up first. We've, you know, I've spent a lot of time talking about uh, this game. I just gave people a prop and Roy Dell Williams, the Florida State running back. Georgia Tech saw spot on their defense. Their secondary is pretty good, uh, but you can run the football on them. They were a little bit undersized. Florida State lose their best wide receivers. They have good running backs back. Their old line's good. They have a new quarterback. So I think that Florida State are going to look to run the football tomorrow, but. I like Georgia Tech in this game, Tony. I think they're going to hang around. And um, I think there's going to be some points in this game. I like Georgia Tech plus the points and over 55 and a half. Well, I think you have to, I mean, King Haynes or Haynes King, how you want to call him. And the old that's oh, that's Haynes King. Uh, I mean, yeah, I know. Uh, but King Haynes, I like better. Don't you like that? King Haynes. Or, uh, so, uh, uh, hold on, Tony. You still, we still got to click. It's like you have the. <laughs> It's like you have the hiccups or something here, Tony. Dear God. All right. Just a reset with Tony here. I'm going to start smashing things. All right. Uh, take Tony off, and we'll, re- we'll reset with him here. Love Tony, but uh, right, we can't we can't deal with, like, this this click every two seconds. Mm-hmm. Always something with Finn, huh? This one's like we're like a nice, smooth. Tony's not a fan of uh, Sade, smooth operator. <laughs> it's always got to be. It's always got to be something. It's like, like I said, it's, it's like he's got the hiccups, you know, one, one click uh, after another. So uh, let's see what happens behind the scenes, see if you guys can uh, fix this with uh, with Tony. Uh, fourth quarter just started San Francisco with the football right now. Like I said, you got Josh Dobbs out here too. So there's no reason why, you know, I mean, it shouldn't be some more points, but the total is 52 and a half uh, in the game. Montana State and New Mexico. Yeah, we don't. We're not going to dip into too many player props uh, in this football game. We're just going to uh, take the New Mexico Lobos and hope for the best and hang on. But I brought up the weather earlier. Everyone's always talking about all the Dublin, Ireland weather. But all right, there's weather concerns, and I'm not a big weather better. You know, I think weather is one of the more kind of overrated handicap things. People sort of use it as low hanging fruit often. Oh, and this and that. If it's extreme. Right, if it's and wind is the big thing, like rain, cold, whatever, dude. Some of the highest scoring football games have been in like snowstorms. So, you know, weather can be kind of overrated in football handicapping, I find. But the knowledge, just where our knowledge of the CFL comes into play, because there's not a lot of summer leagues, right? Even like the XFL and the USFL, they're spring leagues, right? The CFL plays in like serious hot hot ass conditions man like 100 degrees type stuff and you know football teams aren't used to that so tomorrow you got um forget about dublin it's going to be 62 degrees in dublin tomorrow so it's p- p- perfect football weather but you got montana state these kids are coming from montana and you're going up to uh to new mexico where it's like 93 degrees plus feel level it'll feel like worse in the uniforms it's going to be like really hot tomorrow and when it's really really hot it's conducive to an under. Everybody slows down, right? Everything just sort of becomes in slow motion. Nobody, you know what I mean? Everybody's just sort of cramped up, dehydrated, and you see it all the time. I've been to a million of these CFL games where it's super hot in the afternoon in the middle of the summer, and you realize this is actually dangerously hot to be playing football in. So tomorrow, 93 degrees. Hot as hell. I think the kids from New Mexico who practice in this stuff daily will be more acclimated to it. So when I say that weather is not a factor, I think it's sort of when you, when you talk about summer handicapping, it's, it's a little bit different. All right, San Francisco. I thought it was incomplete at first glance, but it's a catch. I guess it's a catch. Whatever. If this is a regular season game, to debate it for an hour. But it looks like San Francisco just fumbled the football. The Ra- They're giving it to the Raiders. So Did he really ever have it? I guess so. Hey, I'm on the Raiders, so let's go.
Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrew. sharpest football contest show in the land the las vegas football contest show focuses on circus sports million circus survivor and the westgate super contest handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season with two former super contest winners brady cannon and james salinas a former nfl player mike pritchard and over one million dollars in contest prize money won combined the las vegas football contest show will have you prepared this season like none other This is Sports Rage. I'm Ramsey, the Pittsburgh players, the hustlers, the people to bust them, and everybody else in between. So now the Raiders have the ball, second and goal right now. In game totals, 54 and a half. Crazy stuff here. You know, listen, I'm glad we, we already hit it, but I'm like, after what happened tonight, I'm almost like, I want to roll it over and hit this again some more and uh, and really cash this. There's uh, the Brock Bowers. 24 um, 21, third and goal coming up uh, here. The Raiders could kick a field goal to tie the game, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just went for it because it's the uh, the preseason. No, it wasn't uh, wasn't Bowers. So um, we'll keep our eye on this. Tony Finn, I don't know we got a click problem with Tony. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> see what happens uh, moving forward. But I don't want to end the uh, the week uh, in frustration here, which uh, we're starting to lean into uh, a li- just just a little bit. <laughs> just. Just a little bit. And uh, I see right here, I was talking earlier about uh, about Pat McAfee breaking the internet. Now I see the stories are starting to pop up and stuff. And uh, I'm going to be curious to see on college game day, <laughs> college game day uh, tomorrow as the college football season is set uh, to begin. I'm going into the studio again tomorrow too, of all times. Um the recording studio. I've been working on a uh, solo guitar project throughout the summer, spring the the spring and summer. It's been extended. I've been in the studio twice, and um, now it's been like a, a little bit over a month. And now football season's coming up uh, here. Dear God, the Raiders just threw a freaking interception in the end zone. Welcome to preseason football, baby. The Ra- <laughs> that was a horrible pick too. Raider, he just sort of threw it up there. So the Niners just picked them off in the end zone. So it's still 24-21 uh, right now. Horrible, uh, horrible pick uh, by O'Connell. 24-20. They're still covering, but now if the Niners score a touchdown, we're not covering uh, anymore. See, of all days, uh, we're going to the studio tomorrow, but next week we're going to be in Vegas uh, for the contests. Enter in the contest, and if you're out there and you're going to be in Vegas and you need a proxy, check out uh, Vegas Matty. Um, he's our proxy. He's been our proxy for over 10 years. We're going to be hooking up with him. He'll be at Circa and the uh, the Superbook next Saturday. So will we. We'll be bouncing around watching the games. And then uh, at the LSU-USC game 
total 63 and a half. And this number is really, really coming down right now. You know, we're so focused on this week zero stuff, but while the week zero carcass has already been picked by the Sharps, the week one numbers are starting to get like all over the place. Like uh, Texas A&M. Texas A&M were minus one, like all summer. And, you know, the game was basically a pick them one, one and a half type of deal. A&M are up to three right now against Notre Dame uh, next Saturday. The Michigan Wolverines open up uh, their title defense. They're laying 21 and a half. And I do respect the Fresno program, but they lose Tedford again. And I don't think this is the best edition of Fresno. Although Fresno, you know, they're a comp- they're a competitive football team, Fresno. But Michigan's defense at the big house, you, you don't score on them. So how many points are Fresno State really going to score on Michigan? And I know the number's 21 and a half, but Sharon Moore's going to want to get the season started with a party and get some confidence going into the Texas game. And speaking of running the football, Michigan are just going to run the football like 50 times a game uh, this year. And I don't think Fresno State's going to be able to stop it. I've been told that Tony Finn is uh is back uh with us looks like he's wearing a nebraska uh a nebraska uh golf uh shirt what is that tony what do you have on today i see it's adidas but is it a team or is it just adidas just adidas just an adidas just a tony finn adidas shirt yeah do you have a favorite uh you have a favorite uh college football team what's your alma mater arizona state Oh, that's right. So, yeah. I don't hear you talking yeah, about the Sun Devils too team. much. No, no. My favorite football team is the team I have money on. So, uh, that's my <laughs> favorite team. It so, changes. It changes who like you, 10 times a day. Who, that's it. <laughs> who do you have money on uh, tomorrow? Georgia Tech and, uh, and Florida State. Who do you have? I do have Georgia Tech. I'm with you on that. I do have Georgia Tech. I have a couple other games I really like. Um, there's some interesting games, too that uh, I don't know. I haven't talked a lot about them on any, uh, any of my radio bits, but uh, what, Montana you know, I, like, State? I, I, I like, well, it's funny you said that, How, you know, the fact that Montana State's a double digit dog and F, uh, you know, over an FBS team that uh, this is FCS versus FBS. This isn't, this is new ground. You know, I mean, you'd have to go back to, and I can't remember, I, I can't remember, but the last time a double digit road favorite over an FBS team, um, obviously, New Mexico's got some issues, but again, Montana State minus 10, 53 and a half. I think is the last time I looked, right? 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Wow. Uh, and I, I looked at it earlier. This when week, was the I last look time you looked? Two ago. weeks ago? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, 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 no. no. Uh, um, I just looked a couple days no, ago. No, it's so going up. It's, it's, yeah. It's gone up over the last like 24 hours or so. But I'm on, I'm I'm on New Mexico in this game. And I told people I like New Mexico earlier in the week, so clearly they don't respect my opinion because the Montana State money has uh, has flown in. <laughs> How about – I like – listen, I like SMU, but we're talking about a number that's moved, I think, at circa I mean, six points almost in this game. This is a – the movement on this game is is incredible in my opinion. I mean, if that's bad, but are they that bad? Are they 27, 28 points bad? Yeah, you know what, Tony? This is the classic scalp job going on, though, with this game. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. the public isn't betting this game enough to be moving this number all over the place. People are I stepping agree. in and just buying it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And yeah. I imagine this game's a nightmare for the books, actually, because there's going to be a bunch of people with, you know, Nevada plus 28, um, SMU minus 24, and then a bunch of 20 plus 26 and a half, and 25 and a half. And it's probably going to mm-hmm. land in between that, too. I think they'll probably end up winning. I actually thought, I didn't mind. I said the other day when it hit 24 and a half, I said, all right, I can live with this at 24 and a half right now. Cause I actually sort of have them winning by about 27. Now at 27 and a half, it's just sort of a crapshoot right now, a flip of a coin. I would rather lay the 40 yeah. with Hawaii than the 27 and a half with SMU. And there's another one, right? I mean, this is a, a Delaware State. Wow. 40 points. I mean, this is, this is the Hawaii Rainbows. But then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a – I think Delaware State lost like 57 nothing to Army last year. Yeah, and, uh, 57 nothing to Army. 
<laughs> yeah, and lost pretty big to like Miami, Ohio, who was one of the better teams against the number uh, last year, actually, Miami, Ohio. So uh, this is an interesting game as well. There's no, you know, the feature game, obviously, is the Georgia Tech, Florida State game. But um, when you're betting on Florida State, you're betting on replacing an awful, I mean, this is basically a team under construction. Can we call it that? Uh, updating uh, quarterback, receivers, uh, that's a lot of points, a lot of yards, a lot of production they're replacing and hoping that DJU is the guy. He's, you know what, though? It's not, and with all due respect to Jordan Travis, it's not like Jordan Travis was an awesome quarterback. No. No. He was a decent quarterback on a good football team, and he used to just throw it up there, and Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson would jump up in the air and get it. So, like, right. DJ's like a bigger prospect. You know, mm-hmm. It hasn't fully clicked for him, but to be honest, you know, we'll see. Listen, it's a big year for DJ as far as, like, his NFL future, right? Right. But Cle- Clemson's offense never got better without him after. Like, they, they no. sort of, all right, mm-hmm. it didn't work with him, and they brought in Cade Klubnick, who was another, like, five-star recruit-type quarterback, and th- okay. they've sort of stalled. Uh, they stalled with him offensively, too. But I think Klubnick's a good quarterback. And uh, I just think it was sort of, like, lack of skill position players around him, injuries mm-hmm. with the Clemson Tigers. I think Clemson actually are – being very disrespected coming into this year. And I think Clemson are going to win double-digit games and get into the playoffs. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows that QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrit. sharpest football contest show in the land the las vegas football contest show focuses on circus sports million circus survivor and the westgate super contest handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season with two former super contest winners brady cannon and james salinas a former nfl player mike pritchard and over one million dollars in contest prize money won combined the las vegas football contest show will have you prepared this season like none other I think I'm going to pat myself on the back here. Um, if you recall off the top of the program, I said it feels like an Otani night tonight. So I think Otani's going to hit a home run uh, tonight. And I said, you know what? Let's take Otani to hit a home run and let's take uh, Otani over one and a half total bases in case he gets a double or something like that off the wall instead. And remember, guys, it was the eighth inning. The game was tied 3 3. And I said, the nice thing about these bets is you're still alive until the game's over. Like, you know what I mean, Tony? He didn't hit a home run yeah. yet, but I was still alive until the game was over. He saved the best for last. What a show this guy's putting on this year. 
Uh, listen, Aaron Judge, unbelievable. 49 home runs now for Aaron Judge. I think Otani's a better all-around player than Judge, and never mind the pitching. But, um, but wow, both these guys are unbelievable. Otani, unreal. Dodgers are hot right now, Tony. They just cost Scott Service's job. <laughs> like, yeah. Poor bastard gets beat up by the Dodgers. They're like, you're fired. It's like, you know, we just played the Dodgers, right? Like, what do you want from me? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. all the complaining about the Dodgers, this and that, that people do. Man, what a difference Muncy's made. Edmonds made. Uh, Lux is hitting the ball hard right now. The, the, the bottom of the order is starting to contribute, Tony, and they're, they're scary good right now, this team offensively. Bobby Miller they blows, are. though. They Let's are. just call it out for what it is. Sorry, Bobby, but you're not going to be part of the playoff rotation. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's uh, that's the one thing that really uh, worries me more than anything is they they need to you know they need to have a uh, who what are they going to do if Kershaw starts pitching better they have some decisions to make when postseason time comes around not going to be easy for Duncan in the front office but uh, it'll sure be interesting see how people have, see how this pitching staff is performing at what level so well they're they're they just they're, need I to think pray they're ball. Yeah. they just need to pray that they have. Out of all the combination of players, I love this. The Raiders, there's like a girl. She's like praying, and very, very upset. The Raiders are punting the ball right now. She looks like a, like a teenage girl. I'm telling you, Raider fans are special, man. Uh, 24-21, six minutes left in this game. Got to hold them, though. I can't. Yeah, they can't score a touchdown. So if the game ends at 45, fine. We'll hit the overs. We got the Raiders, Tony, plus nine. I'm yeah. down by three. You know, the worst case scenario is they score a freaking touchdown, get the extra point, I lose by 10. And I've had a couple of these beats, and here we go. Big punt return. All right, there's a flag at least. So um, there's a flag. Yeah, so 7-3 Dodgers uh, tonight, Tony. Big win against uh, Tampa. San Diego won again tonight, though. The, uh, the These yep. these teams, man, in the American League West or just uh, in the National League West are on fire right now, Tony. Arizona's yeah, they, won four in a row now. Dodgers have won five in a row. I would say this, I'll, I'll disappoint some or upset some Arizona fans, but you mentioned San Diego. San, listen, what San Diego's done since the break, even a little bit before the break, is they're hitting the ball better, I think 27 points better, 30 points better, like 80 points in the OPS better. And They have the they, best record since that, the All-Star break yeah, in baseball. Yes. they uh, And they strengthen that bullpen, which is – pretty mission critical and and of course king pitching really well and they don't they got they got a chance to get even better tatis comes back maybe uh who knows darvis maybe he can you know this team could be pretty darn dangerous uh come playoff time absolutely so uh tony there's a lot of hype about yeah. uh, ohio state and a lot of these college football teams are playing big time games like early in the season, like next week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Georgia, Clemson, non-conference battle going head-to-head. -head. Michigan's playing yeah. Texas in two weeks. Um, <laughs> Notre Dame's going to Texas A&M. Like a lot of heavyweight programs are playing games that they don't have to play, but they scheduled anyways, yeah. right? And then you get Ohio State opening up with Akron. <laughs> so, so you get Ohio State. Ohio State don't play a tough game until like the Ducks in week six type of deal yeah. so it'll give him time to get going i saw nick saban briefly today i saw a clip of saban talking about ohio state and anyone would know about pressure tony and saban and he goes yeah. he goes i wouldn't want to be in ryan day's shoes and he goes all this yeah. nil money all the hype all the all-star you better win and he said and saban would know he goes it creates anxiety in the locker room he goes, you know, every mistake that's made in a game, it compounds it. And he starts to talk about how it's, the pressure's bad. It's not good. And he was saying, like, Ohio State type of pressure that they're under right now. And it's one of these deals where they're lucky, Tony, because I swear if Ohio State was opening up the season against a good team, I'd take the other good team plus the points because it baffles me, and I think you kind of agree, that you have $20 million in payroll, you have all this money, you have all these blue chip young quarterbacks, yet you're handing the keys, if you're Ryan Day, your job, your legacy, your reputation is in the hands of Will Howard from Kansas State. Amazing. As a Michigan fan, Absolutely. this is what I hang my hat on. I'm like, well, it's not like they have a great quarterback. So, right? They think he's great. Yeah. So, okay, we'll see what happens. But 
I'm, it's look at the quarterbacks they've had. Guys like Justin Fields and like um uh, uh you know um you know Caleb uh, and Haskins, Dwayne Haskins. I'm going back. Yeah. Uh who's the other kid there? Dotson or whoever the hell. I don't even want to remember the kid's yeah, name. Yeah. He beat us. But anyways, they all they've always had good quarterbacks. Um I mean, they yeah, but Joe Burrow, Burrow didn't Burrow play. He left. He couldn't even get a job there, right? Right. He left. Uh yeah, here's the God. deal. First off, <laughs> yeah. First first off, Day, this is speak Day's gonna prove who he really is. I mean, no hardball anymore. Let's prove who you really are. But more than anything else, there's a huge difference between playing in Columbus, Ohio for Ohio State in that setting than there is at uh, Bill Schneider Family Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas. This Will Howard is going to show us who he is, too. I'm telling you, maybe not early in the season, but this, this is a, the, uh, the pressure on Will Howard is as much as it is on day, in my opinion. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. They play three tough games this year, right? And, you know, listen, Michigan have like five or six sort of heavyweight matches. Michigan play three top five teams, which is crazy. But um, so Ohio State, but the thing is two of the three games are on the road. Like so, they go to uh, they go to Eugene, Oregon. That's not going to be easy for them. Ohio State, like winning no, that game for Will not. Howard. All right, no. you talk about pressure. Okay, you, like you said, this ain't the Big Twelve kid. This is like real deal stuff here, man. Ohio State and Oregon, and they also go to Penn State. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Been a lot of talk about the NFL, the new kickoff rule, but something I just saw here in in the preseason is uh, no more um, when they no more measuring chains, Tony. No more chains. Right. right they right. have the markers yeah. on the sideline, but they actually just do like tennis style video right now. So they just sort of showed the line and it said short. <laughs> it was like okay, that's the yeah. new. It was pretty quick though. I was like, all right, that's you know, it sort of caught me off guard. I was looking up. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. That's how they do it now. Um. How many, how many times is that going to glitch? I mean, are they prepared for a glitch 
in that system this year during on a Sunday in an oh, important game. In they have time. enough money. Yeah. They have more money than Ohio State. Well, they do. <laughs> so they have, but are they, 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 but are they ready for it? <laughs> they, they have a lot yeah, of money. All right, Tony. Before we get you out of here, yeah. um, baseball mm-hmm. tomorrow. I've been in football mode, but uh, looking ahead, the Yankees are minus 260. Uh, tomorrow, crazy game tonight, Baltimore and Houston. Tomorrow you got Valdez. It's Valdez and Suarez. Astros are minus 125 yep. tomorrow. Short price with Ray on the hill mm-hmm. here for the Brew Crew against Boyle. Uh, Milwaukee are minus 130. Boston and Arizona are a pick with Gallon and Crawford. What do you think about the baseball games tomorrow? Uh, you mentioned two of the games I like, and one of them is Valdez. I've been in Valdez both last times. If you look at his numbers over the last uh, month, month and a half, six stars, seven stars, nobody's been more efficient. He's striking out uh, batters at a, at a record rate for him and his, you know, simply his command and, and ground ball uh, arsenal. Uh, I like Valdez a bunch at that price. I also like uh, I like Gallon uh, over in Arizona, over Boston. I just don't think that uh, – I listen. I'm not a big fan of this Boston pitching staff. The starting rotation. I wasn't tonight. I liked Arizona. Got on them. Uh, they went up early. Played them first half and second half. Gallon tomorrow. And Valdez tomorrow. Houston, Arizona. Tony Finn uh, with his great stuff. Yes. Uh, Tony, I got some best bets that I to share right now with everybody. I have, I haven't had one of these sort of all. You know what? We're gonna get screwed in this Raider game. The Niners are moving the ball right now. They're on like the 12 yard line. There's uh, two minutes left. They don't need to score, but it looks like they will. Um, we haven't had one of these, you know what, I'm going all in type games in, in the CFL in a while. The college football, whatever, it's a week zero. We're going to play them all. But I really do like the BC Lions tomorrow. Uh, BC have lost four games in a row. Nate Rourke is back. They've had a week and a half to practice and get ready for this game. Ottawa's bringing back, speaking of uh, the Big 12, Drew Brown, former Oklahoma State quarterback, was injured. He's starting. He's back again for Ottawa tomorrow. So he's missed uh, the, he missed the last uh, you know couple of games. Now he's back, but Nate Rourke and the BC Lions are a desperate team. I've heard good things about their practice uh, this week and their their mind frame going into Ottawa. Ottawa have overachieved this year. Uh, don't forget, Nate Rourke's from Ontario, too. So this is a homecoming game uh, for him. Hasn't played at home in a couple of years. So this will be a big deal for him and his family. Look for the BC Lions to win this football game uh, tomorrow. I think it does go over 50, but I like the BC Lions uh, more and as far as the college football is concerned we did the video we've talked about it we're not changing our mind and we're even getting more value uh, right now but we do like Georgia Tech plus the 10 and a half points I like the over 55 and a half in that game I like Florida State running back Roydell Williams to get a touchdown at minus 150 and I like uh, Roydell Williams over 71 and a half rushing yards give me Bronco Mendenhall and the New Mexico Lobos plus 13 and a half points on their home field and in 93 to 97 degree temperatures down there, give me the under 54 and a half in this game. I think New Mexico are going to look to run the football with their quarterback and just sort of chip away, pick up first down, shorten the game, chew the clock up. Montana State are more talented than they are, but not an FCS team. And like I said all week, guys, New Mexico, Tony, they haven't lost to an FCS team since 2011. And they've been pretty bad over the years, too. So. Yes, it, it'll be the, it'll be the first time in you know 14 years 13 14 years they lose to an FCS team the SMU Nevada line is just kind of out of hand right now guys if it comes down I like it at 24 and a half type deal 24 24 and a half not in love with it here I do like SMU's team total though over the 41 and a half and I think Hawaii Tony are gonna hang a stupid crazy old school Hawaii number on these guys tomorrow you got Timmy yeah. Chang as the coach uh, you got the offense back, the quarterback back. I think he wants to get some positivity going. I think they win, like you know, I'm gonna weird score. I'm gonna say they win 59 to three. Oh <laughs> Hawaii, oh yeah. yeah. Hawaii's team total is 48 and a half, guys. <laughs> Put it that way. I think they're gonna get there. Find Tony over a wager talk. Find him on Twitter X at Finn at wager talk. We'll be back on Monday. We've got some uh, schedule uh, changes and program announcements coming up with the football season. Stay tuned. Other than that, you're on your own. Later.